think we could see that. Well, certainly. Eddie Murphy. Mm-hmm. It's just... Let me tell you something. He's showing a picture. <laughs> Make sure you go to LFRfamily.com and check out the Bang Bang Tea. Get that Bang Bang Tea, y'all. Hey, Mets, Eddie Murphy. Yeah. It's very nice of you. This is Mr. Rogers' T-shirt. There's right. the trolley. Hey. <laughs> very nice. Thank you. Um, here's a sweater and here's some shoes. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> to bring some for everyone? Yes. Uh, now that sort of thing, I, w I was surprised to see that you, uh, that ever happens. Did much of that go on behind the scenes on your show? Whatever happened to Mr. Rogers, man? Like, was there a scandal, or was he just cool old dude that just went down in history as one of the nicest guys on TV? Goof ups. Sometimes things don't go right in the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> But I did get that thing up. Uh -huh. Oh, good, good. Yeah. Um, you can see that someday. Uh, but often things, or not often, but occasionally things get a little goofy. Yeah. Yes, in that next program that they're going to show on that blooper business, uh, there's a chimpanzee that gets out of hand. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. yeah. so there's a chimpanzee that gets out of hand. What did the chimpanzee do, brother? Uh, what? <laughs> What was, uh, you have provided hours and hours of entertainment and education for young people. What was your own uh, childhood like, your early years like? I, w I was an only child until my sister came when I was 11 years old. Mm -hmm. And I had to make up a lot of my own play, mm -hmm. my own friends. And so I would dip into my bag of puppets and make them talk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Our King Friday the 13th, you mm -hmm. know, speaks like this. And Lady Elaine Fairchild would be glad to be here. Did, uh, did this bother mom and dad? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know. <coughs> that I would speak to myself? Yeah, you were sitting in the room, maybe talking to yourself. Mm -hmm. but, uh... Happily, it didn't. <laughs> what is uh, uh he just seems so chill, but he seems so serious too, man. He seems so serious. Like yeah, he's 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 gonna laugh about he's gonna laugh at himself, but he don't want anybody else laughing at him. That's what it that's what it comes off as. Then you got into television early, didn't you? After uh... thirty years ago, I came right here mm -hmm. to NBC and was a floor manager right in these studios. I remember the Horn and Hard Art Children's Hour in this studio. It was terrible. <laughs> People would bring their little children and make them perform. Yo, he really talked like this 100% of the time. I'm blown away. I, um, 30 years ago, I came and I worked right here in this NBC studio as a, as a floor manager. He is like real, like he's going to make you be quiet and listen to him. You know, Bruce Willis actually said something about that. He said, if you want to be heard and you're in a, in a room filled with people, speak very softly. And he had no choice but to be quiet listen to you he clearly never been to a black cookout or black function because if you ain't loud you ain't being heard you gonna have to get loud to be heard you think you're gonna talk real soft around a whole bunch of black people your ass ain't gonna ever get hurt at all sorry for saying your ass around mr rogers because i don't think he cursed ever i don't ever in his life ever Mm. Do you remember? No, I don't remember that. Was it a, a network show or a local show? Or? It was local. And they would just bring kids in and let them, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other shows that you worked on? That, uh... Well, the Hit Parade mm -hmm. up in 8-H and the NBC Opera Theater. My degree was in music. You know, mm -hmm. I write all the music for the program. Incidentally, Paul, we don't have enough time for that song. <laughs> That's what they told me. Told you not enough time for the song? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, maybe you and Paul can get together after the show. And... Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I mean, if you rehearsed it, no sense in wasting the song. Um, now, it's interesting. I believe you pointed out the irony of the fact that in this building now, where you started out your broadcasting career, there is now a show that occasionally has a performer doing an impression or an imitation of you. That's right. I just met him a little bit ago. Do you think we could see that? Well, certainly. Eddie Murphy? Mm-hmm. It's just... <laughs> Let me tell you something. He's showing a picture. <laughs> Man, let me tell you something, bro. Eddie Murphy is in that picture looking like this.
goodness, man. I swear to goodness, Eddie Murphy, looking, look at him right beside him. He look dark as hell, bro. <laughs> that ain't Eddie Murphy. That could be anybody. <laughs> I don't even see nobody else in the picture with Mr. Rogers. <laughs> Could you show everyone this picture? You mind showing everyone this picture? I'm going to start talking like, that's probably Rick James. I'm Rick James, man. That's Rick James. I'm, I'm going to start I'm gonna start speaking that, that quietly around people just to see what happens. You know what? From here on out, I might have to go ahead and adjust my... My microphone because I really like that. I, I think you can save. I think that adds probably like another ten years onto your life from you just speaking that calmly. As a matter of fact, you sound more refined when you speak that way. I think this might be the new me. Nah. That's uh, Mr. Rogers there in the. Uh, yeah. You know. <laughs> Did you say that's half an Oreo? That's racist. <laughs> that's racist, lag 7878. <laughs> oh, man, that's half a Susie Q right there. On the left. Y'all ate Susie Qs? On the left, yeah. Uh, now, how do you react to that? Uh, we talked to, to Andy Rooney about someone doing an impression of him, and he didn't seem too keen on it. <laughs> Well, some of them aren't very funny, but I think that uh, that a lot of them are done with uh, with real kindness in their hearts. Mm -hmm. This dude is talking about people doing s sketches and making fun of him, and he says a lot of them aren't that funny. But a lot of them too are are done with real kindness in their hearts. This dude was was he a preach was he a preacher or something? Was he a priest? What was he? Was he a, a minister of some sort? Do you think that? Do you, Do you think that? that? <laughs> there is one person on radio that really bothers me, though. I, I've heard it, it's somewhere in the, in the Mid-South. And he tells children in my voice to do such things as get their mother's hairspray and their father's cigarette lighter and put them together. <laughs> and he thinks that he's talking to adults, but he's really talking mm -hmm. with children. And I, I think that could cause a lot of fires. Yeah, that would... It, <laughs> well... That's right. You know, it's good. You're exactly right. It would blow up. Yeah, it would burn yeah. and be uh, highly volatile. You, you have... Uh, <gasps> Why is he so serious, man? And I and I think that will cause a lot of fires. I thought he was gonna have a joke or something. Like he literally has the personality of toothpaste, man. And I'm not saying that because he's white. Don't be racist. Um, I'm sorry you're out here so late. I would like to ask you to come back. And you have a, a show coming up on PBS. Just briefly, if you want to uh, mention the, the nature of the, the program. week on discipline. Uh huh. And it's there's a parent special on discipline. And the whole week of children's programs, the first week of March on discipline. Okay. You know, discipline is caring, yeah. just like love is caring. Yeah. And they're both as important well, as the other. I want to uh, thank you for being here, and I hope you'll come back in the next time. So the Bang Bang Tea, I've never had any type of issue with my sex life. Like, we're young. We're still vibrant, even though I'm almost 40 years old. <laughs> we still get it in. I've been married. I've been with my husband for over 20 years. So we still get it in. But when I stay, I ain't gonna give my husband's real age, but he's in his 40s, right? That stamina that happened a couple of hours after we drank that tea and I only drank half and I gave him half. That stamina that happened and you told me, you told me it was gonna be like half an hour. It took me about two hours, but when I say I was ready after about two hours, I was ready like, hold on, what you doing? You took your shower yet? You ready yet? Like, cause, cause I'm ready. And I didn't know, understand why I was ready. <laughs> I'm like, I'm ready. And it did exactly what you said it was gonna do. Oh my God. It did exactly what you said it was gonna do. David Letterman was like, yep, yep, mm -hmm, yep, with you, everything you're saying, yep, okay, all right, all right, you done, all right. I think he's such a nice guy, man.
I think he's I think he's a nice guy. And I and I enjoyed that. Holy crap! Is that where the quartering got that from? Look at this right here. He always has like a picture of himself like this. That was fun. That was fun in my opinion. I don't think uh, Mr. Rogers is is a hoot. Definitely not anybody that I'm going to uh you know go to a party with or anything like that, but he's certainly somebody that I smoke some weed with and have a good conversation. Do I think he ever smoked weed ever in his life? No, I do not. And I don't judge him. And prayerfully, he won't judge me. That brother, man, I like the way that he keeps it real low and chill and cool no matter what. Y'all let me know what y'all want me to know in the comments below. And if you have yet to hit that subscribe button, please make sure you do so on your way out the door. Once again, guys, I'm Van. And now we are all the LFR family. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video, hopefully inside the Patreon as well. Y'all have been amazing per usual. Love y'all.